Okay, so more real. Um, interesting enough, sharing this information, bringing it up, my desire to bring awareness has brought the memory, uh, the fear, essentially the trauma that went along with the seizures brought it really close to the surface and where um, I've been able to I've been able to uh, my brain's a little slow right now because I just had a seizure and At first, I could feel it coming on, and um, actually, I wasn't listening, but I could feel it coming on probably earlier in the day. I just wasn't feeling quite right, and uh, my heart was feeling a little bit more racy. I just wasn't feeling quite right. So... I was going to meet a friend, uh, actually a few friends, and still feeling a little bit racy, and I, for a split second I thought, I should probably call my friend, who happens to be one of my guardian angels, and just tell her that I'm not feeling quite right. I don't know what, but I'm not, I'm feeling a little bit strange. note to self when I feel strange and not just any strange it's got to be very specific strange to listen to my body um, so I was out with my friends and there wasn't anything crazy we're just sitting hanging out my dog is knocking knocking the tripod around. He's trying to be my new cameraman. As opposed to this handsome tripod of mine. Hmm. So I noticed that uh, when I was sitting, I was getting a few twitches. And, you know, I, I thought maybe I had too much coffee today, or the only thing really notable besides besides the videos that I've been making and the information and the memories that are being dredged up. And I feel like I'm doing good things with them because I am sharing them. sharing them with everyone um, and it's to bring awareness and it's important to see you know why so I'm out with people and it's feelings not getting better and honestly it had nothing to do with the symptoms that I've had in the past I didn't feel anything around my head I didn't have that pressure in my chest it was just an overall feeling of, I wish I could describe it, just a very abnormal feeling where I felt a little bit racy, my mind was moving a little bit faster, um, so those were the precursors. Uh, I was able to excuse myself and I went and sat in my car, let my guardian angel know what was happening, and I went and sat in my car, and I got the car into position, the seat. Of course, I'm not driving home, and I'm recognizing the dangers. And um, basically got into position, 
Now, this was a very interesting experience and I wanted to record it as quickly as possible even though my brain's a little slow right now. And I know it has nothing to do with electrical aspects. It's just having seizures like that are, they take a toll. So I was sitting in the car and I moved the seat back. I moved the steering wheel up. The keys were not in the car. I left the doors unlocked so my friend could come and sit with me when she was able to uh, see her message. And the weight in my legs and my arms and just my torso, my, just pretty much every part of my lower body just started feeling like I had put on a lead weight suit. And I sat and honestly I just, I did, I cried a little bit because I had just been talking about how scary they are and how... Thank God for that dog. <laughs> how scary they are and... Um, and uh, it really helped me because... Which sounds strange because I said it made me cry. Um, because I could remember it, I remember exactly what it felt like and I actually wasn't crying because because of what I thought it was going to be. Um, go lay down. Go lay down. Go lay down. not like when I feel sad or whatever emotion he's uh, sensing for me right now. I just don't want him to keep hitting the tripod. <laughs> so anyway, the um, I wasn't crying because, because I was having one. I, I was crying because I was just recently talking about how scary they were and and all I had in my mind were the thoughts of how scary they were. And um, then again, it's not about the shaking. It's about going back to being a prisoner in my head, being completely alert inside and appear to have been passed out on the outside. Um, and that's what happened. The interesting thing is, I went from that lead weight feeling, which was not bad. Uh, you know, I mean, that the tears were definitely starting to run down my face because, just because, imagine, it's been four and a half months. Um, and I really have been remembering a lot doing these video journals. And it just encouraged me so much to keep doing these. A fly or a mosquito or a beetle or something flew into the car when my friend opened the door to check on me. And I didn't see it. And uh, my friend went over to the passenger side because I was sitting and dead weight and all. And um, I had the shakes, but more like this, um, not the full grand mall. I was actually able to speak. My body was shaking, but I was able to speak. Couldn't have my eyes open, but I was, that was cool. <laughs> If there was a, an upside to it, it would be that there's improvement. Um, so this bug flew into my face 
and I went from dead weight to completely freaking out. My whole body seized up. And then I went into a full scale grand mal seizure from this little bug that flew into my face. Now, bugs, they're bothersome to begin with. Obviously, when one flies into your face, it's not cool. <laughs> but when you have that hypersensitivity, and like I've said before, you know, it's hard to process words. It's hard, it's, you don't want to be talked to. For me, it was difficult for me to be talked to during that time. Um, so, and even listening to music that had words, it was just too much input. So what my brain was doing in response to that bug flying into my face, it just, it, I don't want to say that I, not hyperventilating, but it just, if, if I was startled just in a normal setting, take that and put it on some crack and <laughs> that's the reaction, that's the level of reaction that I had where it was just over the top, like somebody just held me up with a knife, you know, I mean, it was terror, pure terror at a little bug but everything is heightened. So, um, yeah, so that one basically went into the normal. I couldn't breathe. Well, I couldn't breathe, honestly, because mm -hmm. I'm sitting in the car and my head is all the way back. And obviously when your head's all the way back, it kind of cuts off the ability to breathe as well as if your head is not all the way back. Um, and got stuck in that position. So I, my neck is crooked over really, really close to my shoulder. I'm up against the, the, uh, the car and shaking and I'm, you know, and at one point I think I must have hit myself in the face a few times, which normally would sound funny. <laughs> I, I'll laugh about it a little bit because like I said, you gotta find humor. Um, you gotta laugh. Laughter is a huge part of my medicine. Um, so when I came out of it, you know, I'm in there. This part, it's interesting. I viewed this almost like an experiment. I mean, once I was in it, in this, you know, once that terror was gone, the sadness of it happening again, whatever quick quick run through of emotions that I was having once that passed and I just kind of accepted it was happening. I knew that in the past it wasn't fighting, it wasn't going to make a difference and um, well, what are you going to do? So I kind of used it as an opportunity to make little mental notes. Um, one of the things I noted was that when my body stiffens up, I had said in the past it's like glass. It really isn't. It's more, not to be gross, but it's more like rigor mortis, um, like where you just, you just can't move. Um, and if you imagine somebody, something, it's not good with somebody, imagine something that rigor mortis has set into, well, moving any part is going to hurt if that thing had any consciousness. So that's one thing that I, I kind of took note of. The other thing is once I did, once the seizure stopped, um, I kind of sat in my head and went over my to-do list <laughs> for what I had to do tonight, um, which is pretty much nothing. I'm not getting anything done tonight, and I recognize that. I, I got a lot of work done last night, and then I 
actually forgot to turn off, turn my um, plug in my phone, and so the battery died. I slept very, very, very late. And if you remember, if you saw the other video, one thing that would make me more susceptible to seizures was an irregular sleeping pattern. And so I got a lot more sleep than I really ever do. Um, and I, at first I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> I still, you know, pretty much from the start of the day, I didn't quite feel myself though. So um, that's something that I took note of. The rigor mortis versus glass I took note of. Um, and just, I could feel all the muscles in my face relax after the seizure passed. And it just, I could see from the outside how it would look like I was asleep. So it took a while to be able to open my eyes, which is always the thing that I can move them out, you know, the earliest. Um, and generally it's followed by me licking my lips because I was just hyperventilating because my neck is back and not hyperventilating because I'm crying, but because I'm trying to get air and it's not really... That position is not conducive to breathing. So, um, there wasn't a lot more to take note of as it was as it was passing. Um, he's just gonna be very active. I say good boy, he comes over here. Um, so, let me give him a little bit of love. Um, so I was, uh, as I was coming out and I could feel control coming back, I was eager to move as much as I could. Um, that wasn't a good thing either because the faster I wanted to move, the more I started to move, the more I was aware that another one could be behind. Mm. Mm. Typically I'd stop and say, I'm not showing this one, but it's an important one I think. So essentially, yeah. what I've learned, what I learned from this is after the seizure, I moved really, really slowly. Um, it was, it was that bug that set it off. I think it would have just been a mild episode. I think it had the potential of just being a mild episode. It terrified me. Absolutely terrified me. So, it is what it is, right? And this is about being real. This is about awareness, and awareness means that I talk about not only what it was like after, not only what it was like before and during, but I consider myself well into my recovery period. And um, I actually had a really great conversation with somebody 
um, in one of my, uh, somebody who responded to one of the videos and it was just amazing because as I sought for more information, it was just, it was just a recommendation of a diet, not like a, you know, no carbs diet type thing, but a, um, a raw vegan diet. And that's all it said. And, you know, typically old me, old Christine would be like, ugh, brother, just need to get your information on. And that was initially what my reaction was. And about an hour later, I remembered who I was now and who I was who I wasn't, and, and that was the person who would say something so judgmental, so quick to judge. And so I, um, I, I contacted this person, and and uh, you can actually see the string of comments in it. I think it's from my first, my first video, um, and uh, it was amazing because, as it turns out, they have a lot to offer. They had a lot to offer me as far as what they've done and it's exciting because that's a separate project I'm working on is just um, how we've lost the power behind the word awareness I mean not sorry how we've lost the power and how unaware we are that we've lost the power behind the word united we say it all the time, it's used, it's reused, repurposed. United is a really strong word. And there's so many words that have lost their, their power, they've lost their meaning. And, you know, I felt a prompting to ask him, did you have PNES? Is this something that helped you? And from there, a whole conversation started where books were exchanged, music was exchanged, um, and there's actually going to be a section of this YouTube channel or my Google Plus page. I don't know. I haven't looked at how to configure this yet. But it will have books on there. And if you have books that you've read that are helpful in any way, please send them in a comment. and. I can't tell you how much it has been helpful to me to know that what I'm doing right now may help another person, even one person. If you have books or music or meditations or anything that has helped you, not only with PNES, but if you have anxiety or um, you know high levels of stress that cause you to have panic attacks. Um, these are kind of universal within what we're dealing with. I'm not quite sure how PNES is not considered an anxiety uh, disorder, but it's not, apparently. And we can all benefit from what we all know. So I have, I have a section. Uh, I've started putting some of my own personal um, favorites in my playlist and that will be mine and any book any motivational speaker any um, any music that you has been a part of your recovery or is a part of your recovery please let me know I'd love to add it of course I will I'm not just adding anything if it's something that really is inappropriate Please don't take offense. I will, you know, I really want to put things out there that are beneficial to everybody. If you read a book, if you could put a little review of why you like that book, that will help everybody. And I'm telling you, that's the most amazing feeling in the world. I have been feeling very good about the fact that I just had a seizure <laughs> for a seizure in four months. And um, I'm not taking it as, it's not a setback. The fact that it was brought on by the stress of thinking about all the past seizures and 
the stress that's been brought up by creating this and also another site for mental health awareness. Those are great reasons to have to have had a seizure. If the, if I had to pick one reason, that would be it. And it also shows me where I am vulnerable. I haven't been faced with anything like that. I've been able to get the do the toxic aspects out of my life. And again, I, I wrote this in the description. Um, it's important for me to say though, and I, I'm gonna try to say it every time. When I say something or somebody is toxic, it's not a judgment against them. It is toxic to me. Just the same way some people have a sensitivity to mm. shellfish. They can't eat shellfish. Doesn't mean that shellfish is bad, right? It just means that that one person is sensitive to it. So the people, places, events that have happened, they were toxic to me does not mean that I am judging as, them as people. I'm not judging them. My work, you know, I said was a toxic environment and it was for me because I did not have the coping skills needed. And not that I'm, you know, I have coping skills now that are great and still wouldn't work out over there because there are still components just like self shellfish that don't jive with me so I hope this is helpful um, like I said I'm, I'm just trying to be real the last thing I thought about when I was having the seizures was getting home and and uh, which I got dropped off I did not drive home I had two very wonderful friends drive me home. Um, that's it. You know, that's, that's it. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm still grateful for the seizure. It is something that I never really thought I'd be grateful for, but I'm as grateful now as I was before because it is an indicator that my body has built in to show me that I'm going the right path, that I'm not going the right path, that I haven't addressed certain issues. Um, thinking about the seizures, I said at one point that I think I might have a little post-traumatic stress. I don't think that I was too far off. So I can't avoid it. I'm not going to. This is important to me. So I'm going to learn how to cope with it. I'm going to work through it because I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop bringing awareness because this is a life threatening illness. This is a life threatening disorder. It claims the lives of every person who has this. We don't have the same life after. You don't feel the same. You lost power. I feel a lot more powerful now because I know I know what I want done for it. I know that I I'm not gonna stop. So I'm gonna continue to be loud and persistent and share all my vulnerabilities which is really really not my natural state of uh, I'm a bit of an introvert and shy slash private so but this is how much I believe in this this is how much I am going to give I'm committed to this and I appreciate you watching and I encourage you again if you have PNES or you have a loved one who has PNES 
advocate for them. Advocate especially, especially when people are speaking ignorantly and acting as though it is a fake illness, it is a fake action that is being done for attention. You try being trapped in a cage in your head after just having violent shakes. You try that and then think how it feels to have somebody say that that's fake. I'm gonna go take him out now. <laughs> well, like I said, Smile and laughter, they're a big part of my, my regimen, as well as my dog <laughs> and my kids that I love dearly. So, and they aren't here, which is, it's a blessing. So, okay, I'm going to try to get this up tonight so that um, hopefully someone will benefit from it. And if it does, and you want to share something of yours, please add a comment. I really want this to not just be my site. It might have my name on it because it, I'm the one who originated it. But this is for psychogenic non-epileptic seizure awareness. This does not belong to me. I want it to become so big that it is nationally recognized. Let me rephrase that, not that I wanted to. It is going to be so big and so much awareness being brought to it that it will have national recognition. I hear you, hope you hear the conviction in my voice. Join with me in that. <laughs>